Hey everybody, it's Chief Whammy here and welcome to the five worst things about Jurassic World Evolution. Now this video isn't to slate the game. I've been playing Jurassic World Evolution for a couple of weeks now and I think it's an absolutely fantastic piece of work. It's everything and more that I could have expected from a dinosaur park simulation game. It's just I found a few issues whilst playing it and I thought, you know what, this will make a great top 5 video. So here it is, coming in at number 5. No detailed tutorials. Now when you start a new game on Jurassic World Evolution, Cabot Finch and Dr Ian Malcolm are the two main people you encounter early on and they help you to understand how to create buildings, how to create enclosures and most importantly how to go on expeditions to search and find new DNA that will ultimately be used to extract, increase the genome and create new and exciting dinosaurs. Your three heads of divisions, science, entertainment and security do then come around, rear their heads and give you a little bit more insight into their fields. But after this, that's it. If you miss the tutorials, skip them confidently thinking that yeah you, you get it, you understand, you'll figure it out. That's it, there's no way to go back and, and rerun the tutorials, there's no way to figure out what to do. Maybe a few helpful reminders popping up on screen every now and again in those first few hours of playing the game would be all that it needed to put your mind at rest and help you enjoy the game to the fullest. With so much to do and so much going on, you can feel a little swamped going in if, if you don't really pay attention to these tutorials. So make sure you pay attention because it will definitely help in the long run. Up next at number 4, easy mode is, well, easy. With an empty park, minimal guests, hardly any dinosaurs, not much to do, you're going to be strapped for cash. It's not an official easy mode per se, but what a lot of people are doing is as they progress through the game, unlocking the next islands, which add to the difficulty factor of the game. You're put in certain situations where money is extremely tight, yet you are required to make the best park, make the best attractions, and it's quite difficult. You do need to put some, some hours and some time and effort into it to complete these tasks. So what a lot of people do is, they go back to their first park. Because by now, you'd have plenty of money on that first park, you should be at five stars. So when those costly extractions come up, and the need to research additional hybrid modifications, additional medications, uh, upgrades to buildings and attractions. You can use all the money that you've earned on that first island. Go back to your original island, Isla Matanceros, and churn out everything you possibly can. Once you do that, you just go back to your other island and, great tip here, sell your fossils that you don't need and sell the the treasures that you bring back that you can't extract any DNA from. Sell them all on the island that you need the money. You can dig for them on your first island but sell them on the island that you're currently on. So then when you go back to your main island you'll have everything unlocked because you spent all the cash from your first island. Pretty easy right? Slotting in the middle at number three. Needlessly confusing power system. One of the initial frustrating factors about Jurassic World Evolution was figuring out exactly how to power your park. I mean it took me quite a while to figure out the whole substation, pylon, power station system. I think it's a great inclusion to have to be concerned with how everything gets power in your park because ultimately that was the downfall of the original Jurassic Park. Power went down, the dinosaurs escaped terror ensued. So I can understand that it would have been difficult to figure out a perfect system to, to implement into the game. But I think they really could have smoothed this out a little bit better. So instead of the need for substations to power everything, they could have attached pylons to each building and attraction that required power. That way you could just connect directly to it. And better yet, scrap the whole pylon power system altogether. Maybe initially, yes, that's what you need to use. But maybe include an upgrade where you can run all your power lines underground or they're insinuated that they're being run underground. 
just to tidy things up and make your park look as best as it possibly can. So you really do need to take a firm grasp of the power system before moving on to the other islands. You'll encounter storms, new dinosaurs that get especially cranky when it starts to chuck it down with rain. Velociraptors, I'm looking at you. And you can even run into sabotage. Now this can all be quite confusing when a power station goes down and you look at your map view of the park and see red everywhere. You don't know what to do, you don't know what to repair, what needs what needs fixing. It can be a bit much to the inexperienced player but you just need to focus on the power stations. The power stations are going to be the ones that are causing the main issue. Other than that it's probably damage from the storm to a substation and that could cause issues that way. So make sure you repair those and reboot your power stations as and when needed. Getting up near the summit at number two, constantly resupplying feeders. Keeping your lovable dinosaurs healthy, fit and feeling great is necessary for customer satisfaction. You need feeders dotted around your enclosures to help satisfy the hunger of the carnivores and herbivores alike. But what I have found a major issue is the frequency as to which the feeders need resupplying. I mean, the herbivore feeders, for example. It's just a shrub, it's just a bush. Do I really need to pay $30,000 to resupply a bush every five minutes? I mean, that is a massive kick in the teeth if you're trying to save money to build more attractions. One of the easiest solutions is to be able to unlock a feature that can automatically resupply your feeders. You should be able to research and upgrade for your ranger teams to be able to use your initiative and go around and resupply your feeders periodically. When you're trying to deal with a power outage or a dinosaur breakout and you've got 10 million gazillion notifications saying that the Struthium Mimesis are going hungry because you haven't resupplied the feeder for the nth time and cost thousands and thousands of dollars, oh my god. Reigning supreme at number one, it's gosh darn addictive. There should be a warning on this game that once you begin, well, you won't be finishing anytime soon. I bought the digital version so I could pre-download it the night before so I could get straight into it on the day of release and I haven't had a decent night's sleep since. I keep on telling myself, oh no, no another, another, another half an hour and I'll be done. But within that half an hour I'll be dealing with breakouts, dealing with disease, extracting new DNA, building more enclosures sorting out my power outages and before I know it I've done a couple of hours and it's one o'clock in the morning and I've got to get up for 5am for work I mean come on this ain't doing my eyes no good sat in a dark dingy room bright lights beaming into my eyeballs it's a good thing this game is gorgeous as it is because it's only been two weeks since release and I think I've played in total, I don't know, coming up to 50 hours worth. And I'm only on the third island. Like, <laughs> I don't know, what's taking me so long? Is it me? Or is it the game? I don't know. I just, oh, I've just lost track of time. I mean, what, what time is it now? Oh, it's three o'clock in the morning. I've been doing this for so long. I, that's it. I, I, I can't, I, I, someone, someone call rehab. Someone call Jeff Goblin, please, just, just help me. So there we have it, the five worst things about Jurassic World Evolution. In my opinion, it's my opinion, I, I, I can say whatever I want because it's my opinion. Give this video a like, dislike if you have to, leave a comment, but most importantly, subscribe. Please, please subscribe. And when you do, click on that bell, you'll get all the notifications directly to your inbox. Just what you want. I mean, who, who wouldn't? And join me again for the five best things about Jurassic World Evolution. I've been Chief Whammy. Over and out.